Hello and welcome to a quick extra Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be making a TV head effect. So to do this we're going to be basically create, uh, needing to extract and capture our live feed. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. So first off I'm creating a canvas. I'm just going to make this to fill our width and height. This will be our background plate. And then I'm going to add another rectangle. This is method one. So this will be a static TV effect. And I'm just going to scale this up to roughly be the sort of width and height I'll expect my TV set to be. So this is if we're using the canvas approach. I'm going to create a new material, select this material, give this an appropriate name. I'm just going to call this my uh, TV, let's say, TV outline. So this will be my TV set with the hole already cut out for the TV area. And I've saved this as a PNG. And I'm going to select my material make sure it's set to flat and I'm going to choose my texture to be my TV texture. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select this TV outline, give it a new name for that rectangle, TV outline like so. And I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to position this new duplicate behind the previous one give it, and, and give it a new material. And I'm going to just zoom in and scale this down just until it sort of fills the width of my TV screen itself. Like so. And just tiny little adjustments until it sort of looks roughly right. There we go. And this one I'm just going to rename this to be my TV background. And this is the approach we're going to do with this is segmentation. So we're going to just again duplicate this background and just call this our live feed. And there's, once we've got this sort of setup done there's many ways we could go about doing this. Again I'm just going to create another new material, rename this new material live feed, set the shader type to also be flat. I'm going to go over to my device and go to texture extraction and segmentation. Go to my live feed, change my texture to be my camera feed and the alpha, I'm going to enable that and choose that to be my person segmentation. As you can see, it's a little bit disproportionate. So I need to go to my live feed rectangle and scale it until it's sort of back into a rough proportion. And reposition it like so. Now I've done that, I'm just going to uh, adjust the materials. So I'm just going to uh, turn off the uh, depth tests on all these materials so they don't intercept with each other. Because you would, if you don't turn this off, you may see some sort of speckling going on with these rectangles. There we go. And I'm just going to give my background uh, a sort of new texture, like so. And I'm just going to give this a sort of black colour for now. So when we've got all these textures and materials in there we can always add these into our patch editor and make them um, apply different effects to them. So we could have things like if we wanted our TV to have a scrolling effect to it we could add a sort of animated shader uh, or we could use an animation sequence in another program. I'm just going to for now though for purposes of speed and delivery I'm just going to change this texture to be black and white. I'm just going to go to Add Assets, Import from AR Library. I'm just going to search under Patch Assets for a color. And I'm just going to use the Adjust Colors patch and import this into my project. If I select my Adjust Colors patch and drag it into the patch editor and link this texture output to my live feed material texture. And then I want to select my camera texture, drag that into my patch editor and link that up to my texture input, like so. Now I can adjust things like saturation, so I can make it negative 100, for example, to make it black and white. And I'll apply this to each material that I want that to be outputted to or influencing over. Because I've done it this way, I can also change the background of the user in the TV set itself. If I didn't want to be able to change the background, I would just not enable person segmentation on the alpha. 
So this is method one if you want a very if you want a static TV background. And again, you could build this into a proper set. So you could have your scene build up. We could position this TV into let's say a sort of fake lounge, for example. And just to show you it working in live, here's a sort of pre-render or pre-video of myself. So as you can tell, I'm recording this post the uh, me producing this effect. And you can see how person segmentation works. Like so. Now we're going to have a look at method two, where we can actually have the TV set uh, attached to the person. So using the face tracker that we created earlier to have the TV follow the user. So this method will be utilizing planes. And again, we're going to be setting up something quite similar. I'm just going to turn the canvas off for now. And I'm going to just pause my video to make my life easier. With this plane attached to my face track, I'm just going to scale this up to be roughly the size of my TV. And I'm also going to just duplicate that plane and use my duplicate plane which is going to be at the foremost back and just going to create a plane which is larger than uh, what we would expect to be possible. So as large as possible, um, bearing in mind, obviously, this will depend on how far back the camera is from the user. So with my TV plane created, I'm just going to add a TV outline. And again, I'm doing a similar setup to what we did with the static TV, except we're using planes instead of rectangles. So because I've already created these materials for a static effect, I can just reapply them to these 3D planes. Now, because we're using it this way, we could also utilize a 3D model of a TV, for example, and we could do the same practice. We would also need to make sure though, that we've got the def test still enabled. And with a 3D model, we'd want to ideally have the TV set as a sort of hollow object with a flat plane inside. And if we wanted to do a glass bevel after on top, we'd have to have the transparency on the material to be set to something like 25% so we could see through it. So here you can have a see how it's set up in live action in 3D. And again, this would probably work better with a 3D TV set, but I'm just trying to use what assets I have available to me at the time of producing this. If there's any form of more materials you'd like to see or request, please remember to comment down below. Remember to like, comment and subscribe, and we're very close to getting to 5,000 subscribers. So I appreciate your support, and I'll see you again soon.